Good afternoon, everyone. Happy Monday and welcome to our latest student town hall. I'm Elizabeth Behar and I have the pleasure of serving as FIU's Senior Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs and the honor of hosting and moderating today's session. Today's town hall is an opportunity to look forward, to learn what's happening on campus and how to make the most of your semester. We have a number of folks both university leaders and student leaders alike, who will use this time to provide updates to you. As usual, I'd like to begin with some housekeeping items. Today's discussion is being live streamed on the FIU Facebook page and is being recorded and will be available later on news.fiu.edu as well as the FIU social media channels. We encourage you as always to send in your questions uh, so that we may address during the Q&A portion. Many of the questions that you may have might be addressed during our discussion with our panelists this afternoon. So I encourage you to listen carefully to the sessions and then we will give you time to write in your questions for the Q&A. When we do get to the Q&A, please make your presentations, your questions as succinct as possible and post them using the Q&A function. I will ask the question to participants on your behalf. And we also have many dedicated staff members responding directly in the Q&A box to you. For those watching on Facebook, you may add your questions in the comments section. It is now my pleasure and please join me in welcoming FIU's fifth president, Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg. Thank you, Dr. Behar. Good afternoon. Thank you all for being with us. Welcome back to this second semester of the academic year. Happy New Year to you. I want to thank Academic and Student Affairs for hosting this gathering. And I want to thank all of our staff uh, for putting it together. We're anxious, we're anxious to have this conversation with you. Yeah, yeah, the, these are difficult times. A, a pandemic that has perhaps taken friends and loved ones and forced you into new and more difficult patterns of action and behavior. A political season that has been turbulent and troubling and perhaps edged you or driven you to be more politically aware and possibly more active than you've ever been in the past. Race relations tensions, unlike anything most, have, most of us have ever known and given you the opportunity to rethink why and how, must, and, and how we must do better in leveling the playing field and genuinely committing to more equal opportunity an economic recession that has crippled our economy and driven you into rethinking your life's purpose and how to get there. In her amazing inauguration poem, Amanda Gorman spoke to this that I've described in her own way. She said, we are striving to forge a union with purpose, to compose a country committed to cultures, colors, characters, and conditions of man. And so we lift our gazes, not to what stands between us, but what stands before us. Dear students, members of our community, we are here this afternoon because of what stands before us. In fact, Amanda challenged us all very clearly. Listen to Amanda. When day comes, we step out of the shade. The new dawn blooms as we free it. For there is always light. If only we're brave enough to see it. If only we're brave enough to be it. She reminded us that your essence as a human being and family member, your experience at RFIU as students 
and your journey as emerging professionals, they are all being forged by what stands before us by the light of the new day. And we are blessed, your members of our community, to have this sanctuary called FIU. It's not just a place, but it's an amazing cluster of talent, hope, and opportunity for you, for us. Never dark, always ready, always on task, always energized. I'm proud to tell you that we have a moral ecosystem at our FIU. Yes, it does require care and feeding. It can always be improved. But this institution, RFIU, is real, and it's filled with good people, faculty, staff, and students, board members, alumni. It's quite a circle of expectation, triumph, and good, all wanting to do the right thing. We are focused on your education, students. Your graduation is everything. Your success as a citizen, a professional, and a humanist are critical to us, and now more than ever. We do expect a record graduating class this spring. Many of you are part of that. But how do we get there? What should we expect? How do we take full advantage of what the university offers in and out of class, especially in these times? That's our focus today in this town hall. And to Amanda's point, there is always light. And I hope that you can see it fully after our important conversation this afternoon. I hope you can see it fully. If not, contact me at mark.rosenberg at fiu.edu. I got your back. I got your back. For me, every student, every learner counts, beginning with you. Thank you. Now on to the program. Thank you, President Rosenberg. It is now my pleasure to move into the panelist discussion and to introduce our very own student body president and university trustee who will lead us off, Alexandra Valdez. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. It is a pleasure to join you all again today for another town hall. Um, I'm here today to not only share what our university has in store for the rest of the spring semester, but to encourage you all to come back to campus and enjoy these resources. Um, I'm really excited to see our students slowly coming back and engaging with us, um, but I hope we continue our long lasting traditions of on campus events and engagement. And I hope that you all join me in that process. So upcoming events and opportunities. Um, first, we have SGA's annual campus safety walk, January 26th at MMC and January 28th at BBC. Um, our upcoming SJ study break event will be hosted at the GC lawns and this would be an opportunity to take advantage of um, our what's not going to be this year spring break but our version of that and really relax with your friends and, and take your mind off um, your midterms and then we have on February 25th um, another segment of women empowerment and women are a collection of their voices and this will be a virtual event and Athletics has been the talk of the town this semester. Students want to come out to our games, and I'm all here for it. Um, we are not only organizing more engagement opportunities, but we're also highlighting the com competing sports this spring. All of our 16 um, athletic uh, sports are participating this spring, except for football. So we have been working closely with our uh, athletics departments to be able to stay up to date on all athletic events, and organize these engagement opportunities for all of you to come out and um, enjoy with us and to obviously support our student athletes and promote our athletic affinity and within our community. Um, and that's on the screen, you'll see our women's volleyball um, game on Wednesday, the 27th at 3 p.m. and women's basketball on Friday, the 29th. 
men's basketball on Saturday, January 30th, and our baseball home opener game will be on Friday, February 19th. I hope to see you all there. And now I want to segue into the Senior Director of Student Life and Development, Jose Toscano. Thank you, Alex. And hello there, Panthers. Hope you're all doing well. Thank you for joining us. Um, just want to give a quick highlight of some of the programs that we've held. Um, definitely, like Dr. Rosenberg mentioned, there's a lot of energy and excitement on campus. Um, the top picture there, uh, we had the preserve. Uh, thank you for the students who came out for our MLK Day of Service. Um, we had uh, dozens and dozens of students come out. Um, we had our concert on the lawn. Uh, I want to thank everybody that came out. That was really exciting. I, I know that some students felt sad that they couldn't stay there longer, um, but I promise you I'm working with President Valdez. Um, the next one that she just mentioned on the 23rd is gonna be a lot more exciting, a lot longer. So if you have the opportunity, you're gonna please make that reservation, more information to come on that. Um, I'd like to highlight too, Order of Omega, thank you for your award ceremony. It was held last week. And boy, oh boy, you know I was there firsthand to experience it. That picture, that long line, there were over 400 students, 400 students for our SPC student programming uproar distribution. That was a lot of fun. I want to thank all the students for their patience in coming out. I, I want to reflect for a moment that we had almost a thousand students viewing our virtual uproar concert. So for that, my hat goes off to you all. Thank you. And I hope you guys look forward to a lot of the stuff that Student Life and Development is putting on for you at both BBC and MMC. Next slide. So this is only a snapshot. Um, as a student, and, and I speak to uh, many students throughout the year, I, I understand you are overwhelmed with a lot of emails. So I did not want to fill slides upon slides of what is out there regarding student life and development. But here are just a few highlights. I do want to stress that for many of these events, you will be getting an email or a message through Panther Connect that will require you for doing an RSVP. Please do RSVP. Uh, we wanna know what is the expectation, the numbers of students are going out there. We wanna make sure that you all get a nice goodie bag or a giveaway. Just looking back at the concert we had, we had a hundred uh, tailgate launchers that were given out. I hope you, those who have it liked it a lot. We'll be doing something similar coming up for the one on the 23rd there. But here's just again, a small snapshot. For more information, next slide, please. There are several ways that you can get information about our areas, and it's not necessarily uh, looking at your just your emails. So one, Panther Connect. If you look at the slide, the picture that I posted there, there's an events part. On that events part, we have everything that our area is doing, but not just our area, but we also have departments that are posting their programs also on Panther Connect. So please check us out. In addition to that, I'm sure you all are very savvy with social media, so please follow us, uh, department social medias, and also on our council student media. Last but not least, we have a massive engagement database. If you go to gofiu.edu engage, our Office of Center for Student Engagement has this engagement database that not only showcases our student groups and what they're doing for programs, but they're also showcasing what different academic units partly of what you may be studying, what programs that they're putting on for you. So please take advantage of this. And again, if we're sending out a link, please make sure you RSVP and I look forward to seeing you at all of our events on campus. Next, we have Andrew Naylor, our Senior Director for Housing and Residential Life. Good afternoon, everybody. It's been a great spring semester so far. We've welcomed over 2,400 students um, onto campus for spring at both the MMC and BBC campuses. That's about two thirds of our normal population and the energy on campus is so much better um, because of these new students. Um, COVID cases, um, despite the increase on, um, of our campus population have remained low in housing. Um, and so we've proven that this uh, precautions that students take work, um, and they're helping us have a, a great semester. Our staff and residence halls associate have planned so many housing activities um, for housing students this spring, from movie nights to painting with a twist um, to a wide variety of other activities that are going to be going on. 
We want you to know that if you want to live on campus for spring, you're still more than welcome to apply at both the MMC and Bayview. And any new student to housing would be prorated based on the date of their move in, which means you pay less to come in. So think about it. If you have classes that are gonna be in person for spring B, come on in and live with us. Um, we also have applications available for summer housing and for fall housing. In, I understand that some students may be cautious about what their next step is going to be for summer and fall, given what has been going on. And so I want you to know that any student that applies now has the opportunity to cancel their housing by April 1st, um, should things um, take a change. But we're expecting that things are going to be better. And so that's why we're confident that summer and fall is going to be even better than the, this spring. Bayview is also accepting leases, but I don't want you to just hear it from me. I want you to hear it from our Residence Halls Association um, president who will talk to you a little bit about what it's like to um, live on campus and share some of the activities they have planned. So I'm turning it over to Jessica Williams. Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, my name is Jessica Williams and I am the president of the Residence Hall Association. Um, just like Andrew said, um, I'll be talking about what we have planning as far as ways to get involved. Um, just a little background about what the Residence Hall Association, what we do. We assist the housing and residential life as well as we're over the hall councils for each individual um, hall at FIU. Um, just to touch up on a couple of things, we actually have a few events starting up this semester that you all definitely do not want to miss. Um, from Resident Appreciation Week happening the week of February 14th to our famous end of the semester go big or go home event. We definitely um, plan to have a carnival set in place, but I do ask that um, all of you follow our Instagram, FIU underscore RHA dot NRHH, and look out for our emails for more updates. Um, I also want to talk to you all about getting involved on campus. Something else to really consider um, with you getting involved, the way you see fit as a student on campus, um, from student to student, I can honestly tell you right now, my involvement as a resident assistant, peer advisor, peer mentor, and all types of student leadership positions that has brought to me has definitely brought me ways um, and opportunities with networking and has definitely brought me to be the person that I am today. Um, I definitely see myself connecting better with my peers and giving perspectives as a student, and not only just a student, but a student leader as well. Um, it really doesn't take much to get involved, and whether you browse Panther Connect to search for organizations to join, or you visit Graham Center AC after Corona to see the organizations offered on campus, you can find yourself involved on campus. Apply to be on a committee or an e-board, um, volunteer, but just get out there and make your mark. So with that being said, um, now onto Sanyo Matthew, the Assistant Vice President of Auxiliary Operations for the Academic and Student Affairs. Thank you, Jessica, what an amazing story. Good afternoon, Panthers. My name is Sanyo Matthew, and I have the privilege of working with some amazing staff at the Wellness and Recreation Centers and the Student Centers at MMC and BBC. I wanna start off with the Wellness and Recreation Centers or the WRCs. So spring semester, the, the, we planned and we prepared and spring semester has been amazing. Your favorite programs are back on the schedule, whether it's sport clubs, athletic training services, group fitness courses, personal training, kayaks at the bay, bike share, pool, the list goes on. So please make sure you visit wrc.fiu.edu and make a reservation. Come on to campus, check us out. We've expanded our hours, expanded our programs. We're ready and ready to welcome you back onto campus. But we also realized that virtual programming has been instrumental for some Panthers. So if it's the YouTube channels or some of the Zoom sessions, those are all gonna be available for you. So you can count on virtual WRC to continue to be there for you and for your wellness needs offline as well. For that, please visit go.fiu.edu forward slash virtual WRC. Next slide, please. All right, switching gears to our student centers. Here, we're also ready to welcome you back. The energy on campus has been amazing and we welcome the rest of the Panthers to come on out. First and foremost, there's a lot of retail and dining options available for you. For more accurate information on what's open and the hours of operation, please visit shop.fiu.edu. 
Lastly, and certainly not the least, I want to touch base on reservations, whether it's to make a reservation for a study space, a small meeting, or even a large gathering. We're ready to host you. We'll be there every step of the way. Now, I want to stop talking, and I want you to check out this video that our student centers teams made. Next slide, please. Allow us to introduce ourselves. We are the student centers at Florida International University, AKA the heart of the campus. A destination for classes, events, services, and retail. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, classrooms and events look a little different nowadays. We've adapted all in-person gatherings to follow CDC guidelines and incorporated many measures to keep our community safe. We can host a variety of events outdoors, and indoors. Classes and larger events such as conventions and banquets can be hosted in one of our many ballroom spaces. While meetings, video conferences, and virtual events can all take place in our multi-purpose spaces. And our state-of-the-art theaters are the perfect setting for movie screenings and performances. We also have reservable sanitized study spaces available to all our students. For available spaces, visit reservespace.fiu.edu. I hope you enjoyed that video. Again, reservespace.fiu.edu for more information. If not, reach out to us. Call us or email us. You can reach us at 305-348-1100 or email us at your convenience reservespace at fiu.edu. We're here to help you. Can't wait to see you. Thank you. Now I'd like to introduce a colleague and a friend, Dr. Charlie Andrews, Assistant Vice President for Academic and Student Affairs. Mute, Charlie, mute. So sorry, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. <laughs> hope everyone's doing well. You think I would have figured out the mute button by now, but all right. Um, I hope everyone's really doing well and um, you're excited to hear about all the events that, are, that have been going on. And so thanks to all my colleagues. Um, my job here is to talk to you a little bit about what's next, right? So we're, we're in spring semester, things are going great, but how do you continue to think about the future and prepare for your future? You know, as the saying goes, you know, you, you, you wanna, stay ready so you ain't got to get ready right so what are some of the ways that you can get ready and, and really be be ready for the future um advising obviously is a critical part of your time here at fiu so you know you want to utilize the panther success network uh, make some advising appointments what's great is that now that we're through the rush our advisors um the appointments are more available so don't wait until registration time to make an appointment to talk about summer and fall classes you can do that now the, the month of february would be a great time for you to set up an appointment and start talking about not just summer and fall, but how can you create a long term plan to make sure that you stay on track for graduation. So, you know, but definitely reach out to your advisors and take advantage of that resource. They're all there and ready to, to assist you. Um, career readiness, there's lots of things you should be doing and thinking about, not just as you're working toward graduation. How are you preparing yourself for those great careers that you're going to have after you graduate? Um, handshake, if you've not heard of it, all students have a handshake account. So you can claim your account. You can see the information here on, on the screen about how to log in. Um, it's a great resource to not only tell you about exciting events that are related to your career readiness, but also to search for internships and jobs. Uh, part of getting back on track and back in the swing of things is to look for those great opportunities. And we know students have done both virtual and in-person internships, even during these times of COVID. So definitely check that out. Student employment is a great, another way for you to sharpen your skills. Um, lots of you, you know, maybe work outside of going to school. And if you're going to do that, what better way than to have a, a part-time job on campus at FIU, which will help you work your classes around your, your job schedule. So there's research that shows students who work on campus actually perform better academically. So definitely check out the student employment options. Lots of engagement. You heard from lots of folks about getting involved that just Threw in another plug here for the Center for Student Engagement, because engagement is not just about all the amazing things that student life and development are doing and the activities and events. You can also talk to faculty about helping them with research and other types of academic engagement opportunities that are going to help you 
uh, round out your opportunities as well. Scholarships, if you need some additional um, help financing your education, there's a great scholarships website that you can check out. Uh, I took a look, there's, there's several scholarships that have deadlines coming up in the next couple of months that you can check out and try to apply for. Um, and all the information is right there on the scholarship website. And last but not least, uh, you know, for all of our graduating seniors, you know, first of all, congratulations. For those of you that will be finishing up your degree, um, be sure that you apply for, for graduation by January 31st. And in case you didn't know, as, as someone who's graduating, you actually there's an application to complete. Um, and the plans for commencement are still being finalized, but that um, allows me to turn it back over to President Rosenberg, who wants to share with you some updates on what's happening with our commencement plans. You see this, this little graduation TAM I have on, ladies and gentlemen, that's because I'm already preparing for what we hope will be a real set of graduations this spring. Graduation, we draw energy, you draw energy, our families draw energy by being with you as you celebrate your milestone accomplishments. And yeah, I mean, we've had three virtual ceremonies and they were special. They were special in their own way. Uh, and we were able to keep everybody safe. There's nothing more special than an in-person graduation. So for spring, our commencement team, we're considering all options. Nothing is off the table so that our graduates and their families have the safest and the most enjoyable commencement experience possible. Everything's still in the planning stages. Things can change at a moment's notice due to the unpredictability of this pandemic. We are planning on having a commencement caravan for each college this semester. The caravan we had last semester was a blast. This, this caravan will be offered to all of the 2020 graduates uh, as well. Graduates are going to have the opportunity to parade through our campus, get out of their vehicle, walk to the commencement stage, have a photo opportunity with none other than Rory while I'm there cheering you both on. And we're also planning on having an outdoor ceremony. Yep, an outdoor ceremony, which will be a condensed version of the traditional ceremony. Graduates will participate in a limited program prior to having the opportunity to cross the commencement stage. And graduates' names will be announced and we will conclude with the final charge. Students are gonna be allowed to bring guests, but we're not too sure yet about the ticket sales and the number of guests per graduate. Stay tuned. This option is gonna be available to all 2020 graduates as well. And please note that the photo opportunity with, uh, with me and Rory is only gonna take place at, at the caravan. You gotta monitor your FIU student email for updates. We are so thrilled that you're graduating and we are so happy that we believe we can get back to a traditional or a somewhat traditional a commencement ceremony. Of course, there will be social distancing, there will be masks, there will be the usual array of, of, of careful measures that have been articulated by the CDC and our FIU Health uh, in order to keep you safe. But we are looking forward to the graduation and to seeing you move your tassel uh, from one side to the other as you graduate. Congratulations, stay tuned. And now Dr. Aneda Roldan. Good afternoon, Panthers. It's truly a pleasure once again to be here with you this afternoon. I wanna thank President Rosenberg and Dr. Behar for the kind invitation. As you know, your healthcare team has been working hard. It's been almost a year since we have been uh, faced with this unprecedented times and this pandemic, COVID-19. However, there's always a good ending to the story. We have come now full circle. We have educated on prevention. We have now have ways of screening. We have ways of diagnostic, diagnostic uh, therapeutics, 
and in nudity. Next slide, please. We are very happy here at FIU. And as you've heard, our numbers here are not anywhere close to the numbers that we're seeing outside our campus. Therefore, that is a true testament that our campus is very safe and that we are here committed for your health, your wellness, and your safety. Preventions, the measures that we can control, as you know, wearing our face mask, washing your hands, or using hand sanitizer, physical distancing, staying at home if you're ill, and continuing to clean surfaces. We also now have the screening. As you know, we have the Panthers Protecting Panthers, the P3 app, that we encourage you each and every day prior to your arrival to use the P3. That is the way that we can actually catch any potential uh, cases very early on. Now we have testing, we have the di which is diagnostic. We can actually test and be able to identify if you have been impacted by the virus very early on. We have our clinics on campus the student health clinic, as always, has not closed. They're here to serve you. We have also the ACC clinic. And now we have the curative sites on campus, two at MMC and one at BBC. We also have our Tamiami test site, which to date, we have uh, tested over 270,000 administered tests. And on campus, we have tested close to 15,000. We also, we encourage you to test and test frequently. This testing is free of charge. Months and months ago, as you recall, this was a challenge, not anymore. You can test as much as two, three times if you have any doubt that you could have been exposed. We also have an entire team for surveillance and contact and tracing that are here to help you. Uh, they follow your P3 app, and they're here to educate, communicate, and keep you healthy. There is random, uh, there's random surveillance, and there is also required surveillance at the housing. So we have, uh, we are encouraged to protect you in every single way possible. And now, of course, we have immunity. We have the vaccines today. I am joining you from our vaccination site here in PG6. We have been extremely fortunate and very, very grateful to our Mayor Levine Cava, who has given us 2,000 doses of the Moderna vaccine. Yes, we have to follow our governor's executive order, but very, very soon, this is going to open up. We know that point of distributions will include something as simple as crossing across the street, a CVS or a Walgreens, where you're going to be able to get vaccinated. So we encourage you that as soon as the vaccine is available for your particular group, please vaccinate. This is going to be a usual and customary as you, as you follow your flu vaccine or any other of the vaccine. This is the way that we, together with the CDC, preventive measures and continuous testing can reach herd immunity. So in, in summary, the best approach to continue to be ahead of the virus and not have the virus be ahead of us is to use all the current tools that yes, your FIU has stayed, has been steadfast and continuously to provide you the, most, the safest campus and the safest environment in this very challenging environment. So use the current tools available to prevent disease and the spread of virus. And something as simple as staying healthy through the healthy habits and behavior is key to reduce the transmission, transmission and staying healthy in this COVID-19 pandemic. Thank you for your attention. And as always, I am here uh, to serve and to answer any of your questions. Thank you, President Rosenberg. Thank you, uh, Dr. Roldan. It's actually back to me now. Um, and I'm sure as many of you are, are you know, either sitting on your couch or in your chair or somewhere in the Graham Center watching this, um, you're just so, so, so excited about the team that we have. And the last things that Dr. Roldan said, stay ahead of the virus. That's where we are now, right? We are, we're focused on our safety, we're focused on our protocol, we're focused on building that immunity, 
and the world cannot stop. Our lives cannot stop. We are dedicated to your success and that's what we're focused on. So we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity um, to make their plans for spring semester, do all of the exciting engagement activities, both academic and student life and leadership oriented, as well as um, ensuring that they're planning for, for their, their futures. So I wanna thank all the panelists. It's been a lot of information, um, very engaging folks. We are so lucky at FIU to have the dedicated folks that, that we do have. Um, working for our collective success. We are now ready to transition to the Q&A portion of our town hall. I want to remind you um, to please make your questions as brief and as clear as possible and post them using the Q&A function. Um, I don't see a lot of questions and that's okay. That means in my book that we're, we're doing a good job. We're giving you the information that you need or you're being thoughtful about your questions and we, um, are not over just because the town hall ends. Where, where we are is always accessible. Um, phone, email, uh, chat, we can, you can talk to any single one of us, um, you know, long after the town hall ends, tomorrow, the next day, um, as you go through the week and plan appropriately for your future. Um, so again, if you're with us on Zoom, post your question in the Q&A function. Um, if you're with us on Facebook, and, and we've got a number of folks uh, on Facebook, please add your questions um, into the comments section. I'm going to begin with the first question um, for this afternoon, which goes to our Senior Vice President of Business and Finance and our CFO, Dr. Ken Jessel. Um, Dr. Jessel, are there any plans to open any more of the restaurants on campus? Uh, thank you, Dr. Behar, and good afternoon, Panthers. So I'm happy to report that right now we have about 12 restaurants and convenience stores that are that are located on both the MMC and the BBC campuses for our students, faculty, staff, and visitors uh, to use, and those will continue. H Street Kitchen is open seven days a week, and we at uh, BBC we have Rory's uh, Bay Cafe that's open Monday through Friday. And we want to encourage you to visit uh, those stores, in particular our local partners, such as Crepe King over at PG5, Almazar, and Sushimaki in the Graham Center, and Tropical Smoothie over at the Rec Center. Uh, right now, we're monitoring the activities. If we have more demand uh, so that the businesses can be sustainable, we will, of course, open up you know, additional venues. As you can imagine, uh, the food industry uh, has been significantly impacted uh, by COVID. Uh, during the fall semester, they were hanging on by a shoestring even on campus. And we know that they're, they're still struggling right now, even with more efforts to repopulate. So please visit and, and visit often. And if we can sustain the operation, absolutely. We will open more venues. We are, are committed to do, doing that. Uh, and we know it's important uh, for you as our students primarily, but for other members of the university community to have the right variety. Thank you, Dr. Jessel. Um, we, we appreciate those updates and we're, we're looking forward to our favorite food venues being opened on campus. Um, the next question is for Jose Toscano. Um, Jose, can student organizations host in-person events? Thank you, Dr. Behar. And if I may also have the assistance of uh, Sanyo Matthew on this, but our student groups are available and are have the opportunity to reserve space on campus. The Grand Center team and the Wolf Center team have done an amazing job to create setups for us. Um, earlier, Sanyo had presented a link on reservespace.fie.edu that shows, if you go on to that link, we'll show different um, dynamics and how to utilize the different spaces. But I'm gonna leave a moment Sanio to talk a little bit more about some of those spaces at both of the unions. Absolutely. Thank you, Jose. And thank you for the question. We have certainly adjusted all our protocols and guidelines. So from a facility perspective, you can count on a safe environment and experience. And we also want you to know that it is different protocols, but we're going to be there to help you. So I encourage you, I can go into a lot of detail, but to save all, all the minutiae there, I, I can leave my, my email address, but I highly encourage 
please reach out to reserve space at fiu.edu or call us 305-348-1100. We're going to help you every step of the way. If you're a student organization on the campus live or an academic student organization, we can help you. There are different parameters, but we can help you every step of the way. I trust the entire team that's behind the scenes there. We have an amazing group. We're going to help you make sure that you can put on your next event successfully. Thank you, Jose, and thank you, Sanyo. Very, very informative. Um, the next question, we're rocking and rolling here, is for Dr. Charlie Andrews. Um, Charlie, what is the class availability outlook for online or remote graduate level courses for summer 2021 students? Um, and this is from a student uh, who takes care of elderly, so is a little bit more concerned about um, potentially returning back to full face-to-face. -face. Charlie? I unmuted myself this time. So. <laughs> um, so yes, thank you for that question. I, you know, there, there are no, the, the courses that are being planned for summer and fall are obviously still being planned. There's, there's no final um, versions of, you know, remote versus in, in person, online and hybrid. Um, I imagine for summer that we're going to continue to, to offer some uh, additional hybrid options to provide more opportunity for students to, to repopulate campus. Um, I think as a graduate student specifically, it would be important to reach out to your program directors and then the faculty in, in your particular program. Um, if you have specific um, circumstances that would prevent you from being able to uh, attend in-person courses, um, letting them know that as early as possible would, would be helpful. Um, our provost has done an amazing job of trying to encourage all of our faculty to be as flexible as possible with students who are concerned about being able to, you know, to be safe on campus due to the, either their own um, medical challenges or those that who they might live with. Um, so I would just, you know, it's to be to be determined. There's still going to be more information coming out as we get closer to um, the schedules being released in a couple of months for summer and fall. Um, but I would, you know, encourage you again, especially as a as a graduate student, you have that ability to reach out to your, your faculty and, and you know, make it be known that um, you might need some special accommodations or some ability to continue to learn remotely um, this summer. Thank you, Charlie. Um, the next question um, is, is a, little, uh, a little bit more of a thought provoking question. It is for our provost. We haven't heard from him yet today, um, but our provost is Dr. Furton. And um, Dr. Furton, this is for uh, a, question, a question from a student Thinking ahead to future years, uh, will there ever come a time when FIU will be completely back to normal? Or will, will there always be some Zoom or virtual component? Um, and also, will there be a time on campus when we will no longer need to wear masks and social distance once the pandemic ends? Mr. Provost? Uh, thank you, Senior Vice President uh, Behar. Um, yeah, those are excellent uh, uh, questions. And, you know, of course, we don't know uh the exact answers to it but at, based on the latest information that we have from um leading epidemiologists you know the expectation is by let's say this fall um as more and more people are vaccinated uh, we may be able to get to uh, less physical distancing or maybe even um uh, removing the physical distancing as early as this fall that's probably the earliest that we could um hope for we'll probably still be wearing face coverings at that time i mean that that's it's uncertain but um because you know they're still looking to see even if you have the vaccine we whether you can transfer the virus and of course we're a florida international university so many countries will still be working on increasing the percentages of um of their citizens that are uh, having the vaccine so i think you'll see a gradual uh return to normalcy this summer, we will likely continue with um, a, a significant number of courses available in our fully um, online, you know, uh, asynchronous online. Um, we're also evaluating the effectiveness of the synchronous um, remote courses. <clears throat> so there's a possibility some of those will continue through the summer, maybe even into the fall. But we do expect that by fall, there'll be more of a sense of a normalcy and more of our, our courses back to not only in person or hybrid, but also um, larger capacities, because right now we're still limited to about a third of the capacity that we had uh, before uh, COVID-19. So, so stay stay tuned, and we also want to hear from you because uh, there there are many students that um, that want that in person, and there are students that would still like these options available, and we'll do our best to accommodate all the students so that um, not only do you get the the mode of delivery that 
that is best for you, but also that you can be as successful as possible because that's what we all want. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Provost. Um, to all our, our students and, and uh, community members out there uh, listening, we hope you found this have found this time to be not only useful and informative, but engaging. Um, we want to make sure that you know that our commitment to you and to your success is unwavering. Um, the newly formed Division of Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion is just one example of that. Um, and you'll be hearing more uh, about them and their initiatives um, for our faculty, for our staff, for our students, and for our university community. Um, it is about collective success, and we are all here, as Dr. Roldan said, to stay ahead of the virus and to ensure your success as individuals, as members of the university community, as members of your family, and as members of South Florida. Um, and South Florida is going through its own resurgence. We're very lucky to be uh, and live where we do. And um, there's really exciting times ahead. And we want to make sure that everyone is not only healthy, um, but well prepared with 21st century skills um, and a solid education um, and lots of opportunities to, to ensure that. And we want you to know every single panelist, um, every single staff member behind the scenes, everyone that you haven't seen yet, but we encourage you to come to campus and see them. Our, our university leaders are here. Uh, we want you to know that each and every one of you is important to us. We are your success. You as a human being are valued. We believe in you and we believe in your future. And that is why we keep coming to do what we do on a daily basis. And to that end, we actually, in true FIU fashion, created a video um, that's entitled, You Belong Here. We're gonna close out the program with that. But prior to that, um, I'd like to ask President Rosenberg for a few comments. President Rosenberg? Yes, the semester is uh, really just beginning. The, what lies ahead of us is very exciting your educations, your journey, uh, your, your development as, as adults, uh, your learning. And our university is poised, ready, very committed to working with you to make sure you get everything and more uh, that you deserve. So thank you for being with us uh, this afternoon. We're gonna go back to plan now, uh, the graduation and the caravans and all the celebrations that are right around the corner, particularly for those seniors, for those who graduated in 2020, who wanna go through the thrill of, of that milestone achievement of graduation and commencement. So thank you all very much. We'll see you soon. As Panthers, we have a shared set of values at RFIU values that reflect positively on who we are as individuals and as an institution. We are committed to creating a culture where everyone feels welcome. The strength of our FIU lies in our diversity and our dedication to equity and inclusion. That's why we want to say it loud and clear. You belong here. You belong at FIU. You belong here. 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 Esta es tu universidad. You belong here. You, yes, you belong here. 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 Like me, you belong at FIU. You belong here. You belong at FIU. Thank you, Panthers, and have a great Monday afternoon.